Hello, BookTube. I've got a tag for you today. This tag comes from Jim's Books, Reading, and Stuff, and it's the J tag. I, I think most people are familiar with uh, Jim and his alphabet tags, or at least most people in this corner of BookTube. Uh, Jim's been going through the alphabet letter by letter and creating a tag for each letter, uh, and they've been getting a positive response from a lot of people. I've been watching this from the sidelines, but I suspected that perhaps when the J tag came around, I just might get tagged because uh, the the usual operation for these uh, letter tags is people whose name begins with the letter uh, get, get tagged when that letter comes around. So the J tag uh, is tagging a whole bunch of people whose names begin with J. So uh, the prompts are all related to J in some way. First one is, J is for Japan. Uh, what is the last book you read by a Japanese author? So I went back through my blog uh, and went back through all the books I've reviewed over the years and was a little embarrassed to realize that the last book I, re I read by a Japanese author was all the way back from 2008. Uh, and I'm somewhat embarrassed to realize that because I lived in Japan for eight years, uh, from 2001 to about the end of 2009. So, uh, you, you know, you would think I would do more reading about Japan. And uh, I, I've, I've read other books since then about Japan, but not by Japanese authors, um, just books by uh, English speakers about Japan. I, I do actually have... When I lived in Japan, uh, I after eight years, my reading and writing was at about an elementary level, um, and uh, I could I couldn't read books. Uh, all the all the proper books I read in Japan were in translation, uh, but I I could read comic books, and I, I've got one here. Uh, apologies, this camera is going to show it in the mirror image. But uh, this one, actually, I think I picked up at a used bookstore when I was visiting Thailand. Uh, but they, they sell these in Vietnam, actually. Uh, Doraemon is super popular in Vietnam. There's a lot of Doraemon books in uh, Vietnamese. But uh, also, if you, if you go to the bookstore here, there's, an ex, there's a sizable Japanese expat community living in Saigon. Uh, so you can find Japanese books in Saigon at some bookstores. So occasionally I'll buy a Doraemon book just for the idea of keeping up my Japanese. Uh, so if comic books count, then, then maybe this one. Although, I didn't actually read it all the way through. I just kind of flipped through it, read a couple pages, see how much Japanese I still remember, uh, and then move on to something else. Um, reading in a foreign language, uh, even a comic book, uh, requires some cognitive effort. And uh, I, I find that I'll, I'll just read it for a couple pages and then uh, move on. So um, the last proper book I read by a Japanese author, but in English translation, was The Last Shogun by Ryotaro, Ryotaro, Ryo, Shiba Ryotaro, or Ryotaro Shiba. Uh, apologies for the bad pronunciation. Even after eight years of living in Japan, I never got my tongue around what they call the liquid consonant, which is the Japanese R sound, which is somewhere between an L and an R sound in English, and I, I never really got my tongue around it. Very early on, actually, I had Japanese friends tell me that I was pronouncing it wrong and it was difficult for me to understand, for them to understand me. And then ever since then I became self-conscious about it. Uh, and then my pronunciation just got worse. But anyways, um, Ryotaro Shiba, or uh, as the Japanese would say, Shiba Ryotaro, um, writes, his, wrote historical novels. He, he died in, I think, 1996 or around then. So I, uh, The Last Shogun was the only book I was able to find by him in English when I was living in Japan. I, I think some of his other stuff has been translated into English, um, but it might 
I, I was never able to track it down. Uh, but th this is what they had in the bookstores. Uh, it's, it's historical fiction, um, but it struck me uh, as reading more or less just like straight up history. Uh, the, the only difference was occasionally uh, the author would say what the historical figures were thinking. Um, but other than that, it wasn't like written up like like we would think of historical fiction in the West, where you know they set the scene, and there's dialogue, and um, you know where it's really written up as a novel. It seemed to be like written up as history, with the author taking some dramatic license in terms of what the characters were thinking. Uh, but Shiba Ryotaro was a, a very popular. Uh, historical fiction writer in Japan, and my, my Japanese friends would talk about him in very admiring terms. Uh, he, he, he was very popular for people who like history and seemed to be, be a very popular author generally in Japan. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry that I never read any other books by him, never came across any other books by him in English translation. Um, yeah, maybe if someday if I ever stumble across more books by him, I'll, I'll try and remedy that. Okay, next one. J is for Jamaica. Uh, what's the last book you've read from the Caribbean? You know, I went through my list and I could not find anything. I, I know I read some Caribbean authors for like a history of world literature class I took back in college. Um, but I could not remember their names now. So I'm going to have to pass on this one. Uh, Jane is for Jane Austen and July, uh, and this is asking, what are you reading for Jane Austen July, which is a booktube event going on now. So I'm, I'm going to have to make another confession here. Uh, I am not reading anything for Jane Austen July, and for that matter, I've never read any Jane Austen. Sorry, I'm going to have to remedy that. Uh, what am I reading right now for July, though? Well, in July, I was reading The Moral Animal, which I just finished. And then for the rest of July, I'm working on The Grammar Book and uh, The Brothers Grimm, and have been talking about these in weekly reading vlogs. Next, uh, J is for James Joyce. So what, what was books have you read by James Joyce? So uh, James Joyce is an author I encountered in my college literature class, uh, college in the American sense, uh, meaning kind of e equivalent to, I think, what would be university um, in, in England. Um, and I really struggled with James Joyce. I, I struggled with all of the modernists. I had been expecting to like James Joyce because you know, he had a reputation for kind of the artsy crowd likes him, and I had kind of fashioned myself as, as an artsy intellectual, or thought I was. But then after reading The Modernist, I thought, nope, 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 th this is not for me. Uh, I'm actually not artsy. I like my books to be very straightforward, like straightforward narratives, straightforward histories. Uh, the, yeah, uh, it, I'm, I'm, I was not smart enough to, to get it. Um, so we read in that class Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man, which is w one of the easier James Joyce books, um, at least one of the... Yeah, actually, I, I shouldn't say that. The, there are easier books, like uh, Dubliners, his short story collection, is... Uh, has a reputation for being much more straightforward. I, I've not actually read it, but I, I'm familiar with it by reputation. Um, but in terms of like the modernist experimental James Joyce, a portrait of the artist as a young man is, is one of the more accessible ones. You've got to work a little bit at it, uh, and there are sections of it where I, it kind of lost me, but on the whole I understood it. And because we were reading it for class, uh, we would come in for the lectures every day and, you know, we'd, we'd be assigned like a couple chapters and then the professor would discuss it. And as the professor was discussing it, I would be like, ah, I get it now. Uh, a, a lot of stuff I would never have picked up on my own. Uh, the professor explaining made a lot more sense to me. Jim, uh, the, the original creator of this tag, mentioned uh, that he had quite vivid memories of the, the section on hell. And 
yeah, that, that, that's me as well. That, uh, that very vivid description of hell from Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man sticks with me years later. It's one of the few things I vividly remember from that book, but uh, yes, I, that part definitely. I, I remember the professor talking about it and saying, the professor was saying, you know, James Joyce is uh, an atheist, but he wants the reader to understand that he's, you know, sometimes Christians will say, oh, you know, those atheists, they're, they're just atheists because they're too lazy or they don't, you know, quite realize how their soul is at stake. Uh, and James Joyce doesn't want to be accused of being lazy or not having done his research or not realizing what's at stake. He wants to say in the book, I fully understand the doctrine of hell. I fully understand, you know, what the Christians think this means to me, for me, uh, as an unbeliever now that I'm rejecting the church. Uh, so, you know, whatever else you can say about me, you, you can't say that I've not thought about what the doctrine of hell means. At, at least that's how my professor explained it to me, which, which was not at all the impression that I would have gotten from the book uh, if I had just read it without anyone explaining it to, it to me. I, you know, you would have thought that James Joyce is some sort of uh, evangelical Christian who's trying to frighten the unbelievers into belief. Or, or I would have it anyways. But yeah, that section on hell seems to be the part that everyone remembers. Um, after, after I had finished that book, because, um, you know, you, w when you're at uh, college, you've got to buy all your books uh, for the course. So I had, I had the copy of uh, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, and then my, my mother uh, was interested in reading it, and she read it, and then she commented, yeah, that passage on hell, huh? Um, it, it, I think it's just what strikes everybody about that book. Um, yeah, so this being booktube, I, I'm sure I don't need to tell anyone out there that uh, the Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man acts as kind of the prequel to Ulysses. Uh, it starts off with the same main character, Stephen Daudelus. But uh, after, my professor warned us that Ulysses gets much more difficult, much quicker. Uh, and I thought, okay, uh, you know, if Portrait of the Artist was a struggle for me, I'm, I'm not going to go on uh, with Ulysses. Um, I, I was actually, I was fascinated. Um, by the uh, James Joyce use of uh, Icarus and Daedalus as as metaphors for artists and how artists fly too close to the sun, I you know I I had been a big fan of Greek mythology when I was younger, but I I never kind of made the connection about the you know the metaphor there. I I thought it was just a you know a moralistic story about a boy who doesn't listen to his father and then he gets what's coming for him. As a lot of these fairy tales. Uh, are, uh, um, but I never considered it as a metaphor about flying too close to the sun and how this could be for artists. So, so that that part as well stuck with me, and the, the you know the whole name of Daedalus. Um, but yeah, n never went on to Ulysses. And the professor himself, he was talking about Finnegan's Wake, and the professor said something to the effect of, "I can't claim to have read Finnegan's Wake." I sat next to it for several weeks, but I'm not sure I read it. Um, but, but by which, I, you know, I, of course, he means he was his eyes were going over the words, but the meaning was largely indecipherable to him. And this was my college professor, who I relied on to explain much of the modernness to me. I thought, okay, well, if if he couldn't understand it, then I'm not even going to try. And, you know, these modernists, at least the impression I got, largely made a game of being indecipherable or making the reader work to decipher them. And I thought, no, I, I'm not interested. Not, not interested in that game. So, yeah, never came back to James Joyce after that. Okay, uh, next one. J is for joke. Uh, tell some sort of a joke about a... a book or bookish joke uh so uh, a man's in the library goes up to the front desks and said uh can i get a large hamburger and fries please and the the library clerk says sir 
this is a library. And the man says, oh, sorry. Could I get a large hamburger and fries, please? Uh, I, I confess I googled uh, that just now before filming this tag because I didn't have a good joke off the top of my head. But when I saw that, I thought, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Next one, uh, J is for Jaguar. Uh, what is your favorite car, your dream car? I'm going to have to pass on this one again. I have... I'm not a car guy. I, you know, I drive a car to get me to point A to point B, or I did back when, when I lived in uh, countries where cars were more common. Uh, here in Vietnam, I've, I've got no car uh, and no, really no interest in cars. Um, so, sorry, uh, gonna have to leave that one aside. Um, okay, so tags. Uh, I'm going to tag uh, Dane Reeves, uh, Books of Blood, Elizabeth Tyree, Mindy's, Mick, sorry, Mindy's Book Journey, sorry Mindy, uh, The Archive, and uh, Jay Shea for this one.